What about the concept of coddling children? And what about the concept of creating, you know, what was, what someone would call a mama's boy, someone who is scared of the outside world and just wants comfort and attention and just wants to be sheltered from stress and anxiety all the time. They just want to be alone yeah. with yeah. Their, their mother and their yeah. parents. Yeah, it happens. But why does it happen? Why does it happen? So there's a study that I quote in the book where they looked at a thousand or several hundred women, new mothers, and how they related to their infants. And most of them related very well. Some were not that available, and some were extra doting and extra coddling, you might say, with their infants. They looked at the adults 35 years later. The people that were the most independent and successful and self-actualized were the ones that were super loved by their mothers. Mm. Okay? Now, and, they re and, and, they, and the conclusion of the researchers was you can't love children too much. Now, the case that you describe is not too much loving, but loving that comes from a very anxious place. Mm. So these mothers that coddle their kids when the kids doesn't need coddling, they're not doing it because the child needs it. They're doing it because they need it. Right. They need it. They're doing it because they were not coddled enough. They're anxious, and they pass that anxiety onto the child. Mm. You don't create those dependent kids by loving them. You create them by by imposing your own agenda on them, your own anxieties on them. So. Those are the mama's boys, if you want to call them that. But the mama's boy is just a very anxious person who downloaded his parents' or her parents' anxieties. That makes sense. Because the kids that I know that grew up like that, their mothers were terrified of everything. Yeah. Yeah. And so they... Boy, but how do you get out of that? If you're, you know, you've developed this, uh, these patterns of thinking that are based on a mother that is incredibly anxious and scared of the world, and then you've sort of adopted these thoughts, and, you know, they call you a mama's boy and that you're coddled. Like, how does someone break out of that? Well, <clears throat> there was a Greek playwright, Aeschylus, who wrote about drama about 2,500 years ago. And in one of his plays, the Agamemnon, he says that the way Zeus, or the way the master, the God created us, was that we have to suffer, suffer into truth. And with most people, mm. I find that at some point, like me and perhaps like yourself, some suffering happens that says, okay, you're not going in the right direction. Yeah. So again, it's got to begin with this understanding that what I'm going through is creating suffering for myself and people around me, and maybe it doesn't have to be this way. There's got to be that recognition. Now, once you get that recognition, the sky's the limit because now there's all kinds of therapies and possibilities. Now you can, I mean, I think a wonderful, I, I don't like this phrase, mama's boy, but it describes maybe a certain kind of personality. What if they did martial arts? What if they worked out? Yeah. What if they developed some confidence in their own bodies to start with because they don't have confidence in their bodies that's right. what you know so I mean, there's all kinds of things they could do yeah once that's you, a big factor once you get that there's an issue you know let alone you can go for therapy you can do the trauma work like whatever uh you can do the psychedelics you can do mdr you can do somatic experience you can do any number of you can do the therapy that i teach compassion and inquiry you can do the martial arts, you can meditate, you can do yoga, you can go into nature. But you need to do something. But you gotta do something, yeah. Yeah, and that, that is the problem, and some of these people, unfortunately, they turn to drugs. Cause, because they're so overwhelmed, yeah. they want a, a complete escape from the moment. Yeah, well, and, and uh, they turn to drugs, or they turn to eating, yeah. or they turn to shopping, like I did. Or, or shopping? To, oh yeah, That yeah. was your thing? I had a significant shopping addiction, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I shopped for, I, I, I talk about this in my book on addiction. I, uh, I, I would shop for classical compact discs. <laughs> but, but, you laugh, but some days I spend thousands of dollars, literally thousands of dollars a day. Did you have the money? Well, I was a doctor, hey? So, yeah, so, so you I, could afford these compact discs. And you know how the addicted mind works. It's brilliant. It justifies one addiction by another. I'd say, but I'm working so hard. I deserve to pleasure myself. Right. So one addiction justified the other, you see. But once, I tell you, I, I left a woman in labor to get a, a, a symphony from the downtown store. 
and I, and, and I missed the delivery. Oh my god! Uh, that's how addicted I was to shopping. But did you think that that classical disc was going to go away? Like, why did you go? Get does, it? does the any addict think? Wow, that's a weird addiction. I've never even heard of anybody being addicted to compact discs. Well, there are people addicted to shopping. Yes, and 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 and, and the addiction is not to the object that you're buying because if, if it was to the sh object you would just go home and enjoy it right the addiction is to the acquisition mm. now what happens during the, when you're looking for something and you're excited yeah you know what happens the level of dopamine which is one of these brain chemicals elevates in the brain which is just like taking a, uh, an amphetamine so it's the thrill it's the thrill and so the gambler the workaholic the shopaholic the sexaholic any addict, substance addict, they're not after the actual, they're as much as after that thrill, that seeking, that dopamine hit, mm. the pornographer, you know, they're after that dopamine hit. Right. No, the no dopamine, which is the seeking chemical in our brain, the, the one that makes life vital and, and interesting and, 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 you know, makes us explore novel objects or seek a sexual partner or seek food. Those dopamine circuits de develop or don't develop based on what happens to you very early in life. And so that the children that don't get the proper experiences, they might be lacking dopamine. Now they have to seek the thrill of the stimulant drug or the, or the exciting activity mm. or the dangerous rock climbing or the, so they can feel really present and grounded. Oh, wow. Or, or, the, or, or, or the shopping or the compact disc, and it's always about the next thing, because you're looking after that dopamine hit. Mm. 